All right, if all this is feeling hauntingly familiar, then you probably already know about one of the best YouTubers on the platform named Oddheader. Over on this channel, I try to look at each game individually and try to get the most out of that one episode, but Oddheader has a different approach, including for Out of Bounds content. He'll pick a fun subject and then choose some of the best examples to put into that video. And as I send up to him and maybe expose some of my audience as well, I decided to make the 10 best Out of Bounds Oddheader discoveries with special guest Oddheader. Guild Wars 2. Apparently if you glitch on the other side of this portal, you can walk well out of bounds and eventually get to a point where you find an unused area. One of the most interesting things that I found about it though was that apparently there's a ceiling cat. And although this area did get used in a later update, this cat was never meant to be seen. A lot of people have made the connection that this one's a reference to the ceiling cat meme. It seems to add up pretty well and I think most people accept that. It still doesn't really make sense to me why there was a ceiling cat meme in an unfinished environment that was way out of bounds that players were never supposed to see. That's pretty freaking cool, but before we move on, let me hit you with a sponsorship that I think you're actually going to like. Loot Crate is the sponsor this time with the Loot Gaming Box. I'm super excited to see what's inside, and we'll tell you a little bit about Loot Crate Gaming while I open these boxes. <clears throat> For the video game fan in your household, Loot Gaming Crates cater to old school arcade fans as well as next gen console gamers. New partnerships with world renowned game companies will expand the IP licensing in 2021 and beyond. The January Loot Gaming Crate titled New Game Plus is filled with exclusives you'll only find from Loot Crate, including a Dark Souls mug, Castlevania scarf. Oh my god, it looks. This is so freaking cool! <laughs> I love it! And Beanie said. The February Loot Gaming Crate titled Respawn is filled with exclusives you'll only find from Loot Crate, including a Metal Gear Solid t-shirt, Doom Guy head stress ball, Pac-Man to-do list, Overwatch vinyl figure, and a Skelly Heart pin. The Loot Crate Gaming Crates start at $28.95 plus shipping and handling. Follow the link in the video description and use coupon code SHESAYS to get 15% off your subscription. This is obviously the coolest sponsorship I've ever gotten. Thanks again, Loot Crate. Freaking Dark Souls mug, dude. I love it. Anyways, back to the video. Slender the Arrival. In Slenderman the video game, you're constantly being hunted down by Slenderman. And you would think that if you could slip out of bounds, you might be able to escape this annoying predator creature. But on the contrary, not only will Slenderman hunt you down, but the developers also injected a message that will play whenever you do it, explicitly combating players that are boundary breaking. I don't know, should I feel attacked? I always like the ones where the developers are kind of poking fun at the fact that you just broke the game. It's kind of like the ATV versus MX one, or the, uh, or even the one when you fall out of bounds in PT. It's kind of like, hey, you just went out of bounds, weren't supposed to do that, so now we're going to give you a heart attack. Shrek Extra Large. In this GameCube title, if you go out of bounds with Shrek and jump outside the geometry, for some reason, every map has a loading zone that's stored underneath the map, and when you trigger that loading zone, it takes you to inside of a GameCube system, which is so bizarre, you don't often see Easter eggs like this left behind by developers that would take this amount of effort. You gotta remember, all these zip zoobs and doodads, they're, uh, they're fully modeled, which is not incredibly easy. I think the weirdest part about it that I didn't mention in the original video is that was just the GameCube version. If you were to do the same exact thing on Xbox version, which is the original version, it drops you into like some sort of really weird, creepy environment. I don't remember exactly what it is, but it's like really poorly lit and there's just chickens in there or something. You can pick them up and throw them around. I don't think there was a lot of differences between the two versions otherwise. So the fact that that's the only thing that's different between them, I don't know what's going on there. Dungeon Defenders. This is a game that is a tower defense and action role-playing game, and this one in particular has something really odd going on about it. Going well outside the boundaries, one player was able to find a very odd head that very clearly uses real-life textures of a real person's face and wrapped it around this goblin-looking model. I'd be really interested to see the extracted texture of this object, but unfortunately at this time, no one's taken the time to ever find it so that we can show you in this video. So Seanatron2000 was on my Discord server and he was playing Dungeon Defenders for himself when he managed to find another one of these ugly fellas on the other side of this door. Except this one is wearing a bunny mask. Bunny mask or not, I still have to wonder if there's anything up with this because that thing is just so ugly. Shadow Tower 
This is one of those From Software games, you know, Dark Souls and all that stuff. This is one of their earlier titles before that big boon for them. I actually got to play this one time, and you know, despite the fact that it's not completely polished, I thought it was a really cool game. Anyways, apparently on one of Oddheader's videos, he showcased a hanging corpse that was left out of bounds. And only under certain prerequisites could you get the body to poke through the geometry. Spory Tyke on my Discord server, as soon as he saw the clip in my video, decided to play the game, use memory hacking in order to get himself out of bounds, and confirmed the body is floating in an empty abyss. Which seems to confirm this moment was just way too dark for a game that was already pretty dark to begin with. Tomb Raider 4 The Last Revelation this game has interconnected areas, so you're in a new area and what you're looking at ahead of you is an old area. Now you're not allowed to get to these platforms over here by any normal means, but if you were to, you can get all the way to this corner here and you can see this absurd building. Walking over there can show you one of the most absurd default textures I've ever seen. Again, since there are no textures for this geometry, the game fills it in with this default texture. I think this one really just comes down to the fact that it looks really cool. It's kind of trippy looking. It's a very striking image and, you know, it's kind of become an iconic one. And it kind of reminds me of uh, the Gabe Newell room too, which again has that really trippy repeating look. But that one is definitely a lot creepier. Horizon Zero Dawn. In Autoheader's video, five more removed Easter eggs that were never meant to be found. I got a good freaking chuckle out of this one. Apparently in the game, some developer left behind a body that is never used and never seen by normal means. Well, somebody from up above caught wind of this and decided to get it patched out after release because they were embarrassed by the fact that there is a lewd joke that's being implied here because this body has a tissue box next to him. And so you can probably draw in the blanks there, I don't have to tell you. Well, sorry to say, Oddheader was able to publish this discovery leading to over a million views and the legacy of the tissue box lives on to this day. And then I saw the hand, just, uh, I couldn't believe it. It was just the funniest thing at that point. Watch Dogs 2. This one's great. In the same video that I was just talking about earlier, Oddheader then talked about the Loch Ness Monster. It doesn't get any better than that. You found the freaking Loch Ness Monster. Now, it can be found underneath the map, but it never gets triggered in a way that it's supposed to actually pop out of the water. So, this is unused content that's out of bounds. So this one, I actually have a really cool update. After I posted the video on YouTube, Thomas Reeple Kobayashi contacted me on Twitter, an environment artist who worked on the original game. And he told me the Loch Ness Monster makes me so nostalgic. If you're interested, there is a small Easter egg in the first level of the DLC Bad Blood, which was a tribute to the cut Loch Ness Monster. Also, there is definitely a much more detailed monster model in one point. It was cut in the very last minutes of development. The one in your video is an early placeholder. When I retweeted that response, Thomas replied again and said, here's the tribute we put in the DLC. I'm surprised nobody really talked about this, it's not even that well hidden. And he's right, nobody's ever brought this up to me, so I have no idea how we completely missed this. Wreckfest. In Oddheader's video, Top 10 Mysteries and Discoveries of 2020, there was one scene where he went far outside the boundaries of Wreckfest, way, way past any place that any player is supposed to go. And at a certain point it was discovered there was a uniquely modeled cow. For some reason, this cow has a Tommy gun and is on his hind legs. So there's definitely a fun update to this one. Right after I covered this, Dylan Babaganous and Wayward Bard sent me that on the new track Sharknado. If you move the camera underneath these bleachers and go behind a wall, you can see that our out of bounds cow friend has returned. And it looks like it's now in a UFO ready to kill some more cows that belong in a cult. Guess we'll see what they find next. Dying Light. This one's great. I like it a lot because you get to this point where you find Excalibur, of all things, but that's not even what the actual reveal is from this video that he put out. If you die in this area, you might respawn underneath the stage. And if you do, there's stuff that's underneath the stage and then you can use your character to grapple to whatever it is. And what it ends up being is a couple of statues. We got two protagonists here, a creature, and a man with a bucket. A man with a freaking bucket, I don't get it. And there was also a safe apparently that's been patched out, which that's a shame because I would love to know what was inside of that. I saw some discussion of this in the Dying Light subreddit after I covered it, and there just doesn't seem to be anything conclusive about it. I feel fairly convinced this might be an unfound easter egg, but otherwise I don't think this one's been figured out at all. 
It's definitely one of my favorites though because it's just so mysterious. It's pretty amazing stuff, isn't it? Do me a favor, if you've been subscribed to me and you like this video, go subscribe to Oddheader. I'm gonna leave a link to his channel on the screen and in the video description down below. But if you're not subscribed to me, you know, give me a follow too. I, I actually cover very similar content. I just tend to focus on one game at a time. Anyways, Oddheader is the special guest today, so I'm gonna leave him with the outro. Take it away, man. This was fun. Thank you again for all this, dude. I just, I, I, such an incredible thing. I, I can't even believe this happened. I love your show so much, and I, I just can't believe I got to be a part of it like this. Can't wait to see the more awesome content that we'll hopefully produce together in the future.